Hey, what's up, everybody? This is The Juice is Loose, my weekly series where we talk about video games and Mario Kart 8 tournaments and all that. Uh, I'm your host, Terminator Juice, and as usual, I'm joined by my friend and my co-host, Derek Steel Fox. Uh, go, go ahead and say hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. I'm making another gem of an appearance on The Juice is Loose. <laughs> and uh, he's got some stuff going on, so he's just going to rock his icon, his uh, awesome uh, metal fox that some really cool dude made for him. So uh, uh, he's going to rock that. So uh, anyway, uh, glad you could make it with uh, with that going on. So uh, yeah, for this show, we got some things planned. Obviously, going to talk about the Mario Kart 8 tournament and, uh, you know, some stuff that happened there. If anybody raced in that, and they know what I'm going to be talking about, we had some problems. But then we'll talk about some of the Comic Con stuff Nintendo had. Uh, go over some news. Uh, Derek's got a, a feature on Destiny. He wants to to talk about that game and the beta. And then we'll talk some sales. And then uh, lastly, uh, pun intended, we're going to talk about The Last of Us Remastered. I've never really given my thoughts. Uh, on that game, so uh, a lot of people have been talking about it. It's coming out, I think, Tuesday, tomorrow, and uh, so we'll talk about that. So let's get started on the Mario Kart 8 tournament last week. The Juice is Loose uh, was going great. We had a full lobby, 12 racers, and a few extra. Uh, there was actually 15 total participants, and uh, it was like I think the top four guys were within 10 points of each other. It was the closest we were race we ever had or tournament and then race 11 comes up and something went on and boom communication error booted a bunch of people and uh, it was myself Andrew Gray and Wheels Pig uh, it put us back into a lobby of four and we I tried to race it I backed out I re, uh, came back in and it put me in that same group and I thought well it's only four of us so I, I raced and the problem with that was First place, I think, gets four or five points if there's four racers. And uh, so I raced one, and I said, you know what, I'm going to back out. I'm going to go to my friends list and try to join some of these other uh, players I was racing with. And lo and behold, I go to Rajo, I join him, and he's in a group of eight. So it split us into a group of eight and a group of four, and I don't know why. I don't know what caused it, some connection error. I've heard Francis uh, from Player Essence said in our Saturday discussion that it was related to uh, somebody with a weak connection and it affected, you know, multiple people, and it sucked because, like, that close group of four or five racers got scattered because the group of eight, they were getting ten points for first place and while we were getting, you know, four or five, and it really, uh, it really screwed over some people. I apologize. It wasn't anyone's fault, but, uh, it's the first time it's happened, and, uh, hopefully it won't happen again. Uh, so I'm going to go down the, the results, you know, the people that ended up on top, uh, the top two guys were in that group of eight for the remaining five races. It was Jason K, uh, Titanium, were, were real close. I ended up getting third still. Gray was right behind me. Then Ibsters, Blake, Andrew, Rajo, Wheels Pig, Blaze, Devin, Sora Life, Ramsey, and uh, and it was Mike and Harden 25, really. Uh, they only raced a couple races. There was, Like I said, there were some more issues uh um, what can you do? You know, it was the first time we had that, and uh, and Derek Steel Fox had something going on. He could be there to uh, to elaborate on this. So, uh, so that's why I'm just kind of speaking here. Um, it sucked. I was really upset. I was in third place when we split, but I was only four points behind first. I was really excited about how this was going to finish, and uh, you know, things happen. It sucks, and uh, it kind of ruined a really good tournament. And, he was in tears, folks. He called that, me after the yeah. tournament. <laughs> I was uh I was angry. I will say that. I was uh I almost didn't want to finish, but I, I hung in there and I uh, got the sm you know, the low points and I just finished the race and uh you know, what can you do? It's it's the first time it's happened. But we got some good news and actually Derek Steel Fox the one that told me, so why don't you go ahead and just mention what, what you had read um about tomorrow? in Mario Kart 8? Well, uh, tomorrow for Mario Kart 8 there is some scheduled maintenance. And I would love to elaborate, but that That's is all, all I know. know. Scheduled maintenance <laughs> your online play. Hopefully. So, 
Does that did you did it like it's gonna be offline for a period of time? Like you won't be able to play yeah. Mario Kart 8 online. All right. right. So I thought. So hopefully they are working on something that will improve that, and we won't have. You know, we'll be the guinea pigs the next day. We'll be at the tournament, so hopefully it doesn't make anything worse. So hopefully they improve it. So uh, it's actually the first time they've actually done anything like that for Mario Kart 8 so far. No patches or anything that's been announced. They might have done some stuff behind the scenes, but um, hopefully they can fix that. It's not a patch. I don't want people to be mistaken. It's something to do with the server end of it that they're hopefully uh, maybe adding servers or something, you know, getting that Nintendo network ready you know, for November, they're going to have to make sure it works a little bit better than when Mario Kart 8 launched. We had a lot of communication errors, so uh, that's good news. Hopefully they fix it, and, uh, you know, anyone uh, that raced in the tournament, you know, hopefully this week we better. We're going to stick to all items, all vehicles, because it was going really well. I mean, one race I'd get, you know, 10th, and then next race I ended up getting first or second with the help of an item, so it actually was pretty balanced and uh, I was pretty happy um, I don't know about anybody else but uh, yeah so that's it for the tournament you know really not much to talk about this week because of those issues uh, I do want to remind anyone watching this you know here's the code I think pretty much everyone who watches these videos is either racing the tournament or, or knows about it but uh, just wanted to give you guys that last reminder um, I'm wearing my Detroit Lions shirt, by the way, because they started training camp today for any football fans out there. Uh, I'll be bringing up, uh, to Derek's uh, chagrin, I'll be bringing up football occasionally in my videos once the season gets going and stuff. I'm pretty diehard uh, for my Lions. So uh, so with that, we're going to move on. Um, we got some, some news, nothing mind-blowing this week, but uh, there was a, a game that I never played, but uh, Derek actually played played the demo on my 3DS I loaned to you, uh, Bravely Default, and uh, that game hit a million sold worldwide, I believe that's physical and digital, which is a pretty good achievement for um, a new franchise, and it was kind of a lower budget, wasn't anything major. Uh, you want to talk about your time with that demo real quick and, uh, and your thoughts on the fact that it sold a million and they've already got a sequel coming out here relatively soon, I think next year, so... Why don't you go ahead and talk about Bravely Default real quick? Well, I definitely don't have much to add. So <laughs> other people can't correct me on at this point. I did play the demo, but that's only because I don't own a 3DS. Um, it's definitely a game I will pick up. Uh, I'm going to say when I get a 3DS because I'm going to bite the bullet on this, but it, it was a fun game. I think a lot of role-playing game fans uh, went for it. You know, It's got a little bit of strategy uh, to the standard turn-based system. You know, I'm not going to go into anything because I, I definitely will talk out of my area of expertise on it. But it was but a fun game. It deserved the sales. You know, it's it something you would definitely feel. buy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's something I would go for. That's yeah. I I never actually tried it. I downloaded the demo and uh, it was just out of my realm. So uh, so I let you kind of speak on that one. Uh, another little bit of news is a, a pretty cool looking indie game that was just shown. I don't know if it was the end of last week, called The Swapper. Uh, it's available on PC, like Steam and stuff right now, but uh, it's like a it's like a 2D platformer survival horror with a really cool gameplay um, mechanic where you can duplicate yourself and create like a carbon copy of yourself in certain spots on platforms and then use that person to activate switches to do all kinds of really cool stuff and it looks like uh, you can get up to like four clones of yourself uh, reminiscent of Super Mario 3D World with the, the double cherry mushroom uh, really creepy atmosphere the footage looked like it had to been uh, like the PC build but they did say it would look closer to the PS4 version on Wii U than the PS3 version which was interesting um, but a really cool use of like smoke effects and lighting and just a really interesting game that uh, I never even heard of you know I could go on Steam right now and download it but uh, this is actually a video topic I want to bring up in the future but uh, I'm not super into playing games on my PC I'm not a big fan of it and uh, there's a few reasons why which I'll go into someday uh, that might be my next discussion video but uh, looks like a really cool game you guys check out the trailer for the swapper um, and uh, let me know what you think uh, 
if you guys, uh, you know, indie games are kind of hit and miss for me, but this one looks really promising, and uh, I'm kind of excited to uh, to see when that is going to release, and uh, potentially, the, this, based on the price, it might be a, a pickup for me. Um, Derek, I don't think you saw that trailer yet. Uh, I think I told you about it earlier today. I haven't seen it. You told me about it, but I think I will probably check the trailer out. You know, it's not really my genre, but I always like to support those good-looking games where the effort yeah, is. Yeah, I think you'd be interested in that gameplay mechanic. How it, It's not really a... It's 2D perspective, but it does not look like a fast-action platform. It looks like a really slow, creepy-type game, so um, definitely check it out, anyone... Uh, if you got a Wii U, uh, look forward to that. If you got a PC and you you like to game on it, you you know you can go pick that up probably cheap right now. Um, so next, uh, oh you know I completely skipped the Comic Con stuff I want to talk about. What this kind of fits in together actually, uh, Hyrule Warriors. There was uh, some new trailers. Uh, Princess Ruto. There was a features trailer. It was like four minutes long. Showed off the Master Sword, um, the Goron. Um, so that was cool enough, but then at, at Comic-Con, Nintendo did a Treehouse Live event, and uh, I kind of heard about it, but I didn't know it was going to be anything other than Smash for 3DS. I thought it was just going to be showing that tournament. They showed some really cool uh, walkthroughs of Hyrule Warriors, and uh, if you didn't check it out live, hopefully they'll start re airing the replays here soon. Um, I was in the middle of a, of a home improvement project all weekend. I didn't catch much. Um, but I did see that the Hyrule Warriors, or you know, it was uh, the Goron dude, and I think it's Darunia um, is his name. It just showed off a really, uh, uh, a really cool like level. Uh, it had lots of scale, lots of like big stairways. Looked like going down into the Goron city, you know, underground. But the one thing that noted that I was like paying attention to was how fast that game moves. You know, I've seen other trailers, but it moves fast, like it definitely 60 frames per second. It's very fast, very uh, um, intense looking action, and uh, it that really of all the things I've seen that looked really impressive. So, uh, Derek, uh, you know we've seen like I said Princess Ruto. Now we've seen the Master Sword, uh, Hyrule Warriors. I mean it just keeps looking better and better, and uh, we keep talking about it every week. So I guess uh, anything to to say about the new footage we've seen and the, the fact that the Master Sword's definitely being featured in the game now. I watched the trailer again before we went live just because I wanted to show my infant children it because it makes them smile. It's <laughs> really good. Uh, the more they show this game, the more excited I get. Uh, you know, they got the music, the flag, the whole trailer was just fantastic. A uh, little bit of humor with the the chickens there at the end. You know, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just... It's a good looking, <laughs> good music, good game. I'm very excited about this. It's I was bitter about it, and I still am about the whole. Um, you know, we don't know too much about the online play, and that's kind of big for me because I really like that aspect of the Wii U. Uh, that said, of course, with the Miiverse, any game we play kind of has an online element to it. Uh, this game is really starting to sell me on just the single player because it's it's looking good. It, it looks like it has a lot more depth than I ever gave it credit for. And I just, you know, every week there's more info that gobble up. I just love it. Yeah, and then one thing to note is they were playing, and in, lots of the complaints have been in the trailers that the enemies don't attack when uh, the characters are doing, like, extended moves that take time. In this uh, live treehouse, they barely had a second before they were getting hit. It was, they were getting interrupted. So they're having to actually clear out some enemies to do some of these moves that took longer setups uh, to, you know, to perform. And uh, so that's a, you know, a big complaint people have had pretty much debunked there if you watch that. Um, Nintendo Everything, I believe, captured like a six-minute, excuse me, six-minute uh, clip of that uh, from the, the live Treehouse thing. And, uh, I, you know, I'll probably forget, but if I remember, I'll try to link that. But by the time... Uh, people see this video later on. They might have all that stuff uploaded to the Nintendo YouTube channel, which you, if you haven't subscribed to that and you're watching me, then go subscribe to Nintendo's uh, YouTube channel. They have all kinds of stuff. They have a Nintendo Minute a weekly series that's inter interesting and their Treehouse stuff, which I regrettably missed the majority of it, and I'm actually 
kind of mad at myself for starting that project. I should have waited a weekend, um, but all I thought was there's going to be a 3DS Smash tournament, and I, I started watching it Friday, and uh, in between matches, they just had these three guys. They were good at um, commentating the live matches, but in between, they were just running out of things to say, and I, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't digging it, so I, I tuned out, and uh, I really missed out on some cool stuff. Um, so, you know, that's just... I think that's going to be their new way. They're going to go to events and have live at the treehouse. I think that's a good way to do it. Um, you know, it gets people who are video game fans excited. The only thing it doesn't do is reach out to those those people on the fence who are still playing their Xbox 360s or the Wii's and stuff. You know, they're not getting out there and, and getting the attention of, of people outside of gaming, but they're doing a good job of hyping people up that are video game fans that do watch that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, what do you, what do you think of this new uh, Nintendo really with their digital event? Their directs have been all really um, so much improved, so much more entertaining, and now this live treehouse thing being in their repertoire now uh, moving forward. Uh, you think that's a, a good move, or um, are you? I guess just give your feelings on it. <laughs> we already talked about this. Uh, maybe just in person, but man, who doesn't like the direction this is going? Uh, all their stuff is getting far more entertaining. Mm-hmm. You look forward to the directs for more than just you know a review on upcoming games. They're they're entertaining to watch. That's that's uh, that's impressive. If a, com- if a commercial you know can capture you in that way, I think they're doing pretty good by their audience. Yeah, what do you think about the live treehouse stuff? You think that's a, a good way? I mean, they're showing the game like they're they're not showing you CGI trailers. They're showing people actual people from the the Nintendo treehouse playing these games uh, live. So, um, you know, it really shows that they a they trust that this game looks good and that it, they're going to be representing the game well. Uh, the game's representing itself. They're not trying to hide it behind anything um, like in a cinematic trailer or something. So. Well, yeah, that's kind of way. They're not going to, they don't show us things that, you know, if they don't feel like they're ready to show, they're not going to show it to you. Uh, And when they do show it to you, it's like we've talked about in the past, it gets better every time. So Mm -hmm. I like the trios things, you know. I've I've seen most of them, and I've enjoyed all of them because they've shown me a new perspective on upcoming games that I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, I'm really disappointed that I missed out on on a lot of that. But uh, Francis chimed in here. He said in the trailers, the difficulty is on easy for Hyrule Warriors. Uh, Dynasty Warriors are, is a hard series if you ramp up the difficulty. That's what I've been hearing. Um, but I wanted to, you know, for anyone watching this that didn't know, uh, watch that Treehouse, and you'll see they're taking all kinds of hits. Uh, so uh, it's it's good to see that it's not some cakewalk where you just smash some buttons and the uh, and destroy everything because I've never played a Dynasty Warriors game, so I, I really didn't know what to expect. So, um, not, I was not expecting to be hyped for this game. I'm kind of surprised that you're hyped for this game. You know, from that first reveal, we were barely like, we just kind of like, mm. it was like a blip. It's like a testament to how they do it. That's exactly what we're talking about. Every time they show something, better and better. It's a build up, you know, not a CGI trailer where then they have to backpedal the next few months and explain why, well, you know, it really can't do this frame rate or mm-hmm. it's really not going to look this good. It's it's all getting better. Yeah, and I mean, people like us appreciate that. There's a lot of people that appreciate the other way where they, they see it look awesome and the end result isn't and they still accept it. But um, let's let's move on here. Um, I think I mentioned in the beginning that we, you, I was going to have you talk about Destiny. Uh, like I said, I was busy all weekend. I did not have time to play the Destiny beta. I mentioned it to you. You downloaded it and you tried it. Why don't you talk about um, the beta, uh, You know exactly what it entailed, and your experience playing it. You got to play it uh, with uh, your, your dad online, so you got to play it with another person you knew, and then uh, any information you've looked up since then and how you feel about the game going from basically not knowing nothing about it till now um, it's got your interest a little bit. So why don't you go through that, talk about the beta and, and everything else after. I would love to. Um, there's a lot of games, well, not a lot, but they're getting more popular games like this. The one I'm going to compare it the most to is the one everyone's comparing it to because it's the one I'm most familiar with, uh, like a Borderlands-style game. Uh, so I really did not know anything about this game when I jumped in, other than that it had some role-playing aspects, and 
you know, my dad was like, hey, I've been playing the beta. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll download it. I don't want to do anything else. Uh, so I jump in and I play and I go through the first mission on my own. And uh, you know what? Let me back up. There's some character customization here. And I know you were curious about mm -hmm. that. You, know, you get to pick your class. There's three classes to pick from Titan, Warlock, and Hunter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and break those down right now. This might just be for the beta. And maybe I didn't get far enough to notice. I didn't notice any difference in really what we had to do or how we had to play in single player uh, or as a party or in online. But the change in classes seemed mostly aesthetic to me. Uh, there, were, you know, there were different armors, maybe some slightly different armor ratings. Uh, there were different skill names for skills that pretty much all functioned the same. Uh, I know there are some differences there. I don't want to give in anybody's bad side. But it seemed like they were keeping that kind of basic. It looked like later on you can definitely uh, branch out those classes. Uh, I would love to see more of that. That's something I like. I really like that aspect of any game. That's the part of uh, role playing games that gets me. So you go through and you customize your character. And I am not artistic at all. You know this about me. I can't design anything. I do not need a detailed character customization. I would prefer just to you know have your character and that be it. I know a lot of people don't like that. Um, I'm going to compare this to another game, uh, Dark Souls, Demon Souls types game. Uh, for people that have played those, you have a really in-depth customization set, way more than I would ever need. Now back to Destiny. On the beta, <laughs> it's nowhere near that. It's uh, complete opposite. There's very little character customization of what you can do. There's a couple different face palettes you can switch from. Um, not even enough. I like a lot of hair options because I'm really picky about it. You know, there was good color options. There weren't that many hair choices. Uh, you know, there weren't really a lot of face choices either. But I don't. I would prefer to have the set faces like they had there. That works better for me than having to adjust your eyes, your nose, your mm -hmm. mouth. I can't get into that much detail. Uh, so it worked well for me. But if someone's looking for a really in-depth character customization, I don't know why you would. But it's not there. Or at least it wasn't in the beta. Now, you go in, the storyline really gripped me. It's definitely a sci-fi game. I enjoyed the storyline. I listened to the narrator. I watched the, the cut scenes. It, very impressive. Far, Borderlands, I love the game. Very fun to play. Storyline, I don't remember a bit about either of them. <laughs> you know, this one, I kind of wanted to keep going through the story to kind of figure out what was going on. And it slows down a little bit, you know, because it's, it's supposed to be a longer game and they can't just rush you through the storyline. Uh, you know, you spend a lot of time collecting things and learn a little bit about the world. But that lore that they have set up, that has my interest. I want to hear some more about that. So uh, we'll get into the open world here. It's not an open world, or at least it wasn't really. You have your hub, which is your main earth town. You, kinda, you can party up. You can go to your shops. You can do all your things in that town. All the players are in there. I mean, I think it's split up between servers. I don't think you can see everybody at the same time, but that just makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, you make your party. You kind of you pull up your... Uh, no, you don't know it, but... Uh, then you go up to your ship, and you basically choose your missions from there, which it takes you down to a map. So it's not really an open world. You're not traveling on foot from place to place. You kind of get in your ship and just choose a destination where it drops you in there. Um, I played with my dad a lot, and I played a little bit solo in the differences. I had a lot more fun running missions with someone I knew. Uh, probably would still be fun running with a random person, but when you drop into a map, other random players are there as well. Uh, I didn't have any issues with this, but I think I heard some other people complaining about it. You can have kill stealing and things like that because you can all shoot the same monsters. I'm not sure how experience is split uh, for people that aren't in a group together. I, it, I didn't, well, you can't shoot other players or anything like that, so there's none of that, but you do kind of run around in the same field with them so they can, they can take your groups of monsters or uh, your enemies, they can shoot them and, and kind of steal your kills that way before you get there. You're kind of fighting some of the some of the missions, we were kind of fighting and waiting in line to complete the missions because there were other groups going through and clearing the monsters out that we so had to get. What was that? And for anyone, a couple of people just joined the viewers. Uh, we're talking about Destiny, the beta. Um, was there an option to do? I've I've heard people talking about like you go in like as single player, but then you do see other players randomly that you That's can exactly kind of cross paths with. Is that what you're saying? That that's exactly what I'm talking about. And you do, and that's it. You know, it's it's cool to see them, but if someone wanted to, they could literally just follow you around and harass you. Yeah. I didn't have any problems with that, 
but it could happen. There's nothing to stop it. You can't, thankfully, you can't kill other people, or that would be really out of hand. Mm -hmm. Now, the controls were fantastic. You know, for me, Call of Duty, it was just drop in buttons. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. I knew how to run and slide. I knew how to crouch. I knew how to jump. I knew how to do all that just from playing Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. And it's really tight. I didn't have any issues where it did seem like I was shooting, where I was aiming or anything like that. Uh, stability was extremely good for a beta. I was pretty impressed with that. I've heard there's going to be microtransactions in this game. I don't know that it, that means it's going to be a pay-to-win type game. Uh, I'm sure the microtransactions are going to be mostly aesthetic, or at least I would hope so for those mm -hmm. that want to invest in the game. Uh, I've also heard there's going to be a level cap of 20. I don't know that that's just for the beta, but that's a really small level cap, I think. I think you had to be 15 uh, to do your first class change. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure if that is the level cap for now, I would imagine they're going to raise it. Uh, Bungie even hinted that they're definitely going to have some future uh, probably downloadable content installations. Mm -hmm. to the game. I mean, this isn't, they're planning on keeping it going. Yeah, uh, they're, uh, I've, I've heard that even into a potential sequel. And they spent a lot of money on this game, so you know they're going to try to get their investment back as much as possible. Um, it's one of the most expensive games of all time, from what I'm hearing, um, since inception to to now. So uh, you know they're going to find ways to try to make some money back, as long as it doesn't ruin the experience, like you said. If if you can't pay to win, if it's just you can get you know make your character look different or make different gun uh, skins, kind of like Call of Duty, you know, then it doesn't affect you. Um, that would be, hopefully, that's the route they take. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. So, uh, so you... all... go ahead. I definitely have to get some to some big points here, and I think for okay. any other big role-playing fans, they'll know exactly why I had to get to these points. Uh, you know, you hear grievances about folks saying you'll have to go back to the same areas and stuff. That doesn't bug me. It's earlier in the game. You got to go back to areas and do different missions. I, I always that repetitiveness never bugs me. I don't even get sick of fetch quests, and I there I said it out loud. <laughs> now, the loot system. I'm gonna say you know open world. I can get past. I don't mind having the hub. Uh, a loot system though, you know, it doesn't have to be as in depth as say, Diablo, but I, there's really not a loot system here, and that was kind of upsetting to me. Uh, you know, you get awards for doing your missions and. That's it, you know. I, I miss the games where you go through and you collect so much junk that at the end of your mission you got to sift through the junk that you got to find what you want to equip. Or there's that rare piece of, that rare drop you got that you didn't expect that you need to level up six more times to even wear. So you just mm -hmm. carry it with you. You sell all the crap. There was nothing like that. We would go through a mission. At the end, I'd get a pair of gloves. And it's like, all right, I got a pair of gloves. That's cool. I did a whole mission for that. It just... <laughs> Uh, was kind of lame in my opinion. I really well, look forward to it. You'd think maybe in the full game there might be a, a better system with more options and stuff? or I don't know. I I really don't know. I didn't read anything where anyone indicated that was the case. Maybe they can... It seems like they might have to change the whole system to do that. I can only speak for what I know and have read from the beta. Um, and that goes kind of the same for chests. You go through and you can find chests. I really did not find very many three, I think, and I played quite a bit, uh, and all that was in there, I know I got, well, I got one piece of equipment out of one of them, and the other ones I just got Glimmer, which is the currency there. Uh, now, the currency is pretty important because you don't get a lot of your equipment through loot, so you actually do buy some equipment from vendors. Some really good equipment is on vendors. You just got to play online and do a lot of stuff to be able to unlock it. If you online, uh, I think you've seen it before. Kind of, you said it reminds you of Domination off a Call of Duty game. Mm -hmm. um, it's balanced in the fact that if you're a top-notch player, it's good. But I couldn't go in and I couldn't compete with anybody. I couldn't do. Even my dad even had more time on the game than me. He was he was much further than me. He could he couldn't go online and and compete with anybody. It's not supposed to be balanced in that way. You know, you're using your character with your stats. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to compete against people who have the best of the best. Uh, so I really didn't have a great experience with that, but I'm sure those people who were up there in the top tier enjoyed it quite a bit. So and you're, you, you get rewarded play. for playing, basically. You, your skills, you're going to be, if you've been playing a lot longer than somebody else, you're going to have an advantage. You're going to be more powerful, which is kind of an interesting 
thing to have in a in a first person shooter like that. That did seem to be my experience with the beta, and you know maybe there's some elements I missed. Definitely, if someone else knows more about it, you can correct me in the comments. Uh, that's just what I came across. Now the AI is the last thing I wanted to touch touch on because. It's important and it's good. It's it's a good AI. I really liked it at first. They definitely know how to take cover, and that was almost all they seemed to know how to do. It was still early in the game. Uh, you know, I didn't come across any enemies. Once I got the hang of it, I would I could seriously just run up the melee attack to give you just wrecks enemies. It just blows them down, and for the longest time, you're just one or two shotting them just by tapping your melee button. And yeah. you can run. Up shotgun and just blow these guys away once you figure out how they move but you know they shoot really slow you can just sidestep their bullets which is kind of odd you know it's, it was earlier so maybe there's going to be better guns and stronger enemies uh, you know the AI takes cover but it's really repetitive and I learned that really early on because I went through some of the early maps uh, with my dad who'd played with them a few times already and you know there was a guy on my radar and I didn't see him and I was kind of like looking for him he's and my dad's always oh, right over here. He always jumps behind this pillar, and he just walked over and melee him. <laughs> like, oh. So he kind of figured out where every, he knew where everything was already going to be just because they seemed to repeat themselves. Uh, okay. So I'm going to say that this game, in the vein of Borderlands, caught my interest most with the story. Uh, you know, I always like to see how classes evolve. Uh, I like the controls, you know. But I'm going to say it seemed... in could just because it's the beta, but it did. It came off as really basic to me, so I'm really not sold on it. I was glad for the experience. Uh, I do look forward to hearing and learning more about it, but this didn't solidify a day one purchase for me just because some of the aspects of it are a little too basic, you know, too much on the first-person shooter side, not enough on the loot-gathering, role-playing guy side that I like to see. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if that, I watched, uh, I think it was Eric Hoots for the win back when the Alpha was out, and it looked like she was just playing Domination. Like It looked like Call of Duty meets Halo, and that thing about the shotguns and the melee, that's that's completely from Halo. Like, Halo's known for overpowered shotguns and the melee attacks. So um, this is Bungie. They made Halo, and uh, a lot of people are saying uh, it feels a lot like Halo mixed with a little Borderlands, a little Call of Duty as far as it's a little bit um, faster paced and, uh, you know, the you die a little quicker than uh, than you would in a Halo game. So, um, you know, interesting to hear. Like like I said, I didn't know anything about that game. I waited uh, till just now to hear about it. I, I told you not to tell me about it earlier. I just wanted to get my reactions. Uh, sounds interesting. And maybe, I think I might have heard that uh, the PS4, Xbox One, and PC versions have upgraded AI. Um, I don't know if that's 100% true. Could be just the developers trying to to cover for some bad AI on those versions, but if that's possible, if that's true, um, you know, it could be a better experience on the, the newer systems, but, uh, you know. Are you ready? Yeah. Seemed like, a, seemed like a good beta, though, from from what you're telling me. One of the things with betas usually is they're, they're a lot more buggy than, you, you know, you're expecting. I, I have one communication error the entire time. So that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Now, because we're talking about it, how about I make that our prediction? What do you okay. think would uh, first week sales for PS4, Xbox One? Where do you want to go with that? What do you think more? What do you, what do you feel about it? Uh, Destiny for first week. Uh, God, I think I'm guessing it comes out on a Tuesday. I think it's September yeah, 9th. 9th. Um, so it'll be from that Tuesday to Sunday. Uh, I was looking at pre-orders not that long ago, and it's it's ahead of Watch Dogs and pre-orders, so. Um, PS4 first week sales. I'm gonna say 1.8 million. Uh, Xbox One. I'm gonna say 1.2 million. Um, first week sales. And uh, you know this game's hyped up. A lot of people. It's one of those games where everyone's talking about it. So all of a sudden, like you're talk, you tell me about it, and then then I might give it a chance. And if I tell someone about it, then it's just like this domino effect of popularity. So. Um, I'm going to say, you know, close to 2 million for PS4 and uh, just over a million for Xbox One. And, uh, you know, you got the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC also. Uh, this could be this could be pretty big. This could be, uh, you know, 5, 6 million within the first month, you know, all systems, which you didn't ask for, but um, I'm just saying this, this game. Hmm? 
Oh, I'm right now, and you're record. You're on record. Yeah. And that's global too. Even though the interesting thing is, uh, it's exclusive on PS4 or PlayStation brand. I can't remember in Japan. Um, it won't be available on on Microsoft when they release the Xbox One, and it won't be available on the 360. Which there's no reason there's not a very big install base. So, uh, it's it's going to be a big game. There's no doubt about it. But will it live up, and will it be justified? Um, well, only time will tell, but I'm sure the hype's going to be strong when that game releases, and uh, a lot of people are going to be drinking the Kool-Aid, as they say, and uh, even if there are flaws, but which it sounds like this beta sounds pretty solid, and they still got a couple months, uh, well, August, they got a month, it, you know, it's pretty much, you know, they got a month to patch in any, any changes, I'm sure the basic, the game's pretty much complete, other than any uh, patches and, uh, and tweaks here and there, but... Um, you know, it's good to hear that it's not a piece of garbage, you know, like like as much uh, as people are talking about it, it's good to hear that it, it's solid in the beta form. So, um, yeah, write those predictions down. Uh, we only got to wait like a month and a half to uh, we'll revisit those. Um, so talk about sales and our pre the prediction. Uh, move on to sales real quick. Um, the week ending uh, July 19, 2014, VG Charts, which is my source. I know they're not 100% accurate, but... Um, it, their inaccuracy should be equal across all systems if you, if you think about it. So uh, 3DS uh, back on top, 120,579 units uh, globally. Uh, it's dropping off a bit in America, but it's picked up a little bit in Europe and in Japan. It just exploded with that, uh, what was that, that watch game? Um, I can't remember the name. <laughs> it's escaping my mind. Uh, uh, whatever that game was boosted the uh, 3DS up big time in Japan. Um, the PlayStation 4 just continues to sell. Like we talked about this before, I do not understand why people are buying the system right now with no games, really, uh, except for the game we're going to talk about next. Uh, 117,447. It had like 50,000 just in the U.S. That, that week. Unless this is just being completely overtracked by VG charts, I cannot believe. Um, that it's selling that strong still based on what? I mean, still the hype or the game's coming in the future. So uh, very interesting to see that still doing well. But then the Wii U, uh, still ahead of the Xbox One at 59,000. That's, you know, right around the 60,000 range. It's been holding steady. Uh, it had gone and increased the last couple weeks, but this is the first time it's dropped off. Um, could be because that Mario Kart 8 promotion's ending. We'll see the Xbox One at 57,774. Um, you know, with really no games out, that that's, you know, we just got Mario Kart 8. Xbox One is absolutely nothing right now. Uh, Titanfall, it just hit over 2 million globally. And the Xbox One is the first Xbox One game to hit 2 million. So, you know, not the big success uh, that people thought, but it's doing pretty well. And then uh, the sales, the software sales, it was... Uh, that Yoki Watch or something, <laughs> I wish I could remember, it was a sequel, that was still doing strong 300 plus thousand, and there was a game on the Vita, uh, I should have wrote those down, but the Mario Kart 8 is the, is the main one I want to talk about, still doing about 88,000, um, still doing strong, and like we always talk about, those games just continue to sell, and uh, you know, I got, I think another week and a half, yeah, Yoki, Yokai or Yokai Watch, somebody comment, Andrew, uh, thanks for that. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I thought it was. But uh, anyway, Mario Kart 8 still doing solid. And, uh, you know, with the hype of Hyrule Warriors and stuff, uh, you know, there's going to be new Mario Kart 8 users con pretty consistently all the way through the end of 2014. Um, and that Mario Kart 8's at 2.2 million right now as of VG Charts, uh, as of 719. So uh, it, within a couple weeks, I think it'll be ahead of uh, Watch Dogs on PS4, like I predicted which had, did like 30-some thousand. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much for sales. Uh, anything jumping out at you, uh, obviously the PS4 is still selling ridiculous. Um, you know, any, any comments you want to have on the sales figures there? Uh, it's always, I always, I don't have any comments other than that I enjoy listening to your comments. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you mentioned the PS4 and good system, great hardware, no problem with it. I don't expect it to be selling that well. You know, as the weeks go on, it's getting closer to maybe Destiny or something. People are picking it up. But, you know, uh, when there was that dry spell for it, 
it just it's amazing that it was selling in such huge numbers. Yeah, it's it's almost like a Wii situation back in 2007. You know that after winter when the supply started, they started finding them in stores. But it's like I see the same four PS4s every time I go to the store. Actually, there was one less this time. Um, and Nintendo, the Wii U's have not been restocked. I made that video like three weeks ago, so they got to get on that. I mean, there's, those sales numbers could be higher. Uh, they're just this store doesn't have the Mario Kart 8 bundles, so uh, I don't know what's going on with that. But uh, it's always interesting. Like I said, I, it doesn't matter to me. I just think it's interesting to talk about and just to look at the global, um, you know, sales just to kind of gauge where where people are at, where consumers are at. And I, I just can't, I just, the PS4, I don't understand. Why is it selling over 100,000 still? I just don't understand it. Um, I could see if it was, like, backwards compatible or something. You could pick up some great PS3 games or something. But uh, that was kind of my segue into uh, the, the main final topic of this video, which is The Last of Us Remastered. Uh, like I said, I believe it comes out tomorrow um, for the PS4. It includes all the DLC, mainly the multiplayer DLC, because there was only one story mode DLC, which was uh, what you played and I did not um, on the PS3. And we should start by saying that we both played uh, The Last of Us. I actually have it sitting right right over there. I was going to have it and hold it up to prove to people. Um, but I enjoyed it so much, and I had it sitting there and mentioned it to you, and I... Uh, surprising to me you wanted to play it and you played it so why don't you just quickly give your thoughts on it so that people don't think you know that we're anti uh, the last of us uh why don't you give your your quick take on on what you thought of the last of us you know just we talked about that you might bring this up today you know just briefly and instead of talking about what we talk about on the show we started talking about our memories of going through the last of us i thought that was interesting just because we both thought and still do think so highly of that game. I didn't get into any of the multiplayer stuff part of it, but, you know, you talk in the environment and the story, and it just that game just sucked me in. I, I really loved it. I didn't need... I completely overlooked any, any bad gunplay or any frame rate issues or any visual issues. I didn't even care about it. I just wanted to go through that game and see what was going to happen next. It had, it had me. It had its claws in me. Yeah. And I was talking about the presentation. Like, I it was last summer, and uh, you know, I got my surround sound up in the living room, and I had my door open with my screen, and those gunshots, just the impact. It has probably some of the best sound design I've ever heard in a game. I actually had to turn it down. I was afraid someone would think I was shooting a gun in my living room. Like, <laughs> just the presentation from the the acting and the uh, the voice acting and the animation acting of the facial stuff was just amazing. They used uh, uh, motion capture and stuff and just the presentation like this is the point we're trying to make that we love this game. It was my number two game of 2013 and the point we're trying to... $15 I bought it just for that tiny... And yeah, you bought that DLC like thinking that... Little, it's just a tiny little game edition and I played it and I loved it. And uh, We had the thought that I was going to be able to download it and we'd split the cost or whatever, and it didn't work, so I haven't... It happened. Okay. Um, so, but the point I wanted to make was it was that story and the acting and all that that got us in there. Seeing that game slightly better resolution isn't going to change the story, isn't going to make the experience much better at all, you know, and... Uh, that's what the question is. Is this too soon to bring this game out or too late? Should it have been right after or at the launch of the PS4 and had been part of that promotion where you pay $10 to bump up to the PS4 version if you bought the PS3 version? Uh, did they do enough? Uh, it runs at 60 frames per second. That's, uh, I think, uh, Digital Foundry said it was... They didn't give a percentage. They said most of the time... Uh, it drops down to 45 uh, with lots of enemies, with the puffer, with all the effects. And uh, they include the DLC for multiplayer and the, the story, uh, Ellie's story, whatever that was called. And uh, is that enough to warrant this game being out a year later and asking $50? So what do you think? What, what's your opinion on that? 
I'm gonna. I don't. It's gonna do well because there's not. I, I imagine there's. It's gonna do well on the PS4. Uh, but I'm gonna say it out loud. I do feel like it's too soon, and I'm sorry, everyone. But I would love to play through this game again for the storyline. But I don't need to buy another version of it to do it now. You know, maybe in a few years, I'd buy another version and it, you know, looking really good. And I know it's running, so maybe give it a few years, really perfect this remastered version, put it out there. People that own the other one want to go through it again, like myself. Uh, you know, it's just too soon for me to invest in it. There's no reason for it. Yeah, I think it's it's too soon to revisit that story, like... It's one of those stories that, I mean, sticks with you, and I remember just about everything of it. Yeah, I started to play through it again, but, uh, you know, if I want to finish it, I still have. I still have my PS3. Um, so anyone that bought the PS3 version, I feel like they should have done that promotion where they'll for $10 you can upgrade because this is a port, people. This is not um, a remaster like it's called. This is a port. They ported the PS3 code over. They had trouble, like you said, in the beginning. They couldn't get the game even up and running at all with a different architecture. Um, but somehow they get the game out you know, within a few months. And, you know, it's not running at 60 frames constantly. And then they include the option to lock it at 30. And they put the, te the like, they tried to, like, make it sound good. Well, if you put it at, lock it at 30, then you get increased details. You get improved shadows and lighting. And it's like, so in order to get the game to look better, truly, than the PS3 version, you have to play it at the same frame rate as the PS3 version, which when you hear the de the developers talking, they said 60 frames per second. Once you play The Last of Us at 60 frames, you'll never want to play it at 30. You'll never want to go back to the PS3 version. It's just so superior, but yet they include the option to play it in 30 frames per second and not 60. So it just seems a little bit... Odd uh, for the game type that it is. Um, for anyone that's played The Last of Us on PS3, I think you're getting sucked into uh, what's called a game drought if you're going to buy this game. Uh, if you really think about it, is it going to improve the experience? Is it going to make it any better to see it at slightly, I mean, at 1080p, slight, uh, like the textures were improved, but it doesn't look that much better. The game looked good to begin with. It's just a little less blurry. So is it going to add enough to justify the purchase? And uh, if Let I had a PS... On this. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to add this. I was just going to say, if, if I had a PS3 version, please buy the remastered version for your yeah. PS4. If you have never played this game and you have a PS4, buy the game, no question. Like, So maybe... They just figured a lot of PS4 owners didn't buy the PS3 version, but they're saying the PS3 version sold 6 million copies. So um, I just I don't know what it is other than trying to fill a void. And uh, there was a, a guy on Google Plus who follows me around. He's kind of a troll. If he's watching this, he knows who he is. Uh, he mentioned, uh, and we've gone back and forth. We joked around and, you know, uh, he said some stupid things, and I, I said some stupid things. But uh, he goes, oh, Last of Us Remastered, you're going to talk about that. Let me guess, you're going to bring up the Wind Waker HD and say how great that is. And uh, that's a good point. Um, I was really going to talk about what we just talked about in the Colin Moriarty review on IGN, but to talk about a game and compare it to something. Okay, Wind Waker HD came out last year for the Wii U. Ten years later... So most and a lot of the audience had never played that game. There's a lot of people out that have never played that game. Um, but my big point is, and I'll say it. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Um, not on air, but you didn't need a side by side video on YouTube to see the difference between Wind Waker HD and the Wind Waker the original. You didn't need it. Once you saw the HD, you knew. Okay, this looks so much better. The lighting, um, wide screen. The colors, everything looked amazing, having the gamepad. You did not need a comparison on YouTube showing the two side-by-side side to see the difference. Um, would you agree with that? I mean, I didn't really talk to you about that. Uh, I remember you raving. I'm giving the opportunity because i got to also chime in. Um, <laughs> what's interesting, um, you know, almost, uh, you know, I'm going to use that hypocrite word, but 
given the 10 year gap and the vast improvement they did between Wayne Waker, I'm glad, I don't know this gentleman's name, but he brought up a really good point. Nintendo got so much flack for re-releasing or rehashing a game after 10 years for doing this, but The Last of Us only had a one year gap. It just mm-hmm. shocked me. I don't have any problem with a game going a number of years and coming out with an improved version on a new system. I think that's a great idea. There's so many games I would love to see that done with. I would prefer there be more than a one-year gap, and I really hope there's a lot of people giving Sony a hard time for this. It, or, it's taken a little bit of flack on in the community and the forums and stuff. It's so hard. Like, oh, you're. I remember it. I remember reading it and hearing it everywhere, you know? Nintendo's game drought, they got to rehash games to get them out, and it's just... I thought they did a great job with Wind Waker HD. I didn't feel like it was a rehash. I went through it twice. Mm-hmm. Plus, when I did it on the GameCube. Yeah, the, and uh, it's what a remaster should be. It's a game, like I said, that it's um, it skipped more than a generation, so there's a lot of p- people who never played it. Um, they improved every aspect of the game, making the original obsolete. There's no reason to ever play the GameCube version, ever. Like, it improved upon it in every single way, in significant ways, um, like I said, the gameplay, the gamepad, the screen, help with sailing, everything they did improved that game enough to justify the new purchase. Does a, a high-res textures and a slightly higher frame rate at times justify the last one? I'm not saying, like you said, if if no one, if you never played it, you have a PS4, definitely go out and buy it. Is that audience big enough to justify them making this remastered? You know, it's personal opinion. But for me, I think it's too soon. If they weren't going to make it a launch game, and like I said, have that promotion, pay 10 bucks, you got the PS3 version. Why should you have to pay 50 uh, to get the PS4 version? And uh, like you said, why is there not more people crying over this? How come? Uh, I'll put it this way: when the Wind Waker HD came out, and the reviews were were all pretty good, nine and above. All the haters were like, "Well, it's pretty sad when the best game on your." Your next gen system is a is a GameCube game remastered. Well, let's talk about the review on IGN for the Last of Us remastered. It gets a 10 out of 10 by Colin Moriarty, the biggest Sony fanboy that I've ever heard or seen in my life. <laughs> so now he's saying the best game on the PlayStation 4 is a PlayStation 3 game. So it's just a hypocrisy. Like I'm not mad that it is probably the best game available on the PS4. I don't doubt it playing the PS3 version. But the thing about the Wind Waker on the GameCube got about a 9 out of 10 average. It's on the Wii U now. It gets a 9 out of 10 because it made enough improvements where you don't want to play that off the Wii U. You don't want to go play that on the GameCube. The Last of Us, now you're saying, is a 10 on the PS3 is also a 10 on the PS4, even though... So what I'm trying to say is that you're setting the bar real low for what a 10 is for a game built from the ground up. You can't you can't change your scale because the game's a remaster. You have to still rate it as a PS4 game or as a Wii U game. Wind Waker HD is a solid nine, um, but is The Last of Us using an old game engine with with higher res textures? You're setting the bar low for what a 10 will be on the PS4 for a game built from the ground up, um, like the order or something that's going to just really push the PS4. So um, I just I disagreed with the fact that they're releasing it this soon, and I disagreed with Colin Moriarty giving it a 10 out of a 10 um, because this game wasn't built for the PS4. So uh, uh, what do you think? I mean, it's hard to convey my thoughts. IGN some clicks, that's what I think. Hmm? You're getting IGN some clicks, that's what I think. Yeah, that's... You know, that, that dude is just a whole other topic. I just can't stand that guy. But um, a 10 out of a 10 for a, a port, a remastered version of a, of a game. Oh, you're, so you're right. A great PS3 game, should that necessarily also be a perfect PS4 game? I don't... I get what you're saying with that. It shouldn't. No, just, just from just uh, principle alone, uh, it shouldn't be able to get a 10 because... What's Naughty Dog's next game like Uncharted 4 going to look compared to The Last of Us? I mean, if you're talking, if you're talking a rating a game, you got to rate it on all aspects. So yeah, the story's just as good, but you got to talk about the presentation and stuff all factors in. Um, so it just shouldn't been able to get a 10. Like if the Wind Waker HD got a 10 on the Wii U, I would have been, 
I would have said, nah, that doesn't. It's not quite a ten out of ten. It looks good, but what? It's not gonna look as good as the next Zelda game. So, what's The Last of Us Two? Like they're saying they might make built from the ground up on the PS4. Now it's even if it gets a ten out of ten, it's a. It just seems kind of weird, uh, and it seems like his fanboyism got the best of him, and uh, that's kind of why most people don't go to IGN. Actually, you were right there when I discovered it. Someone made a video talking about it. It's the only way I know. Um, I do not go to IGN to check out reviews, so uh, you saw me do it. We were just some dude had a video on Google Plus and a comment about Colin Moriarty, gave it a 10, so uh, that's how we saw it. And uh, there is a question related to that, that game that uh, Tony... Uh, asked way early. He goes, what's your thoughts on the frames per second drop in online multiplayer mode? Um, Digital Foundry said in, in certain situations where everyone was in like the building together, uh, it dropped down to as low as 45 frames uh, in an online uh, third-person shooter. That seems a little bit unacceptable, but I didn't play it, so I can't say if it t ruins the gameplay or not. But, uh, yeah, that was another thing. You know, the frame rate's not locked. What it's the PS4 is so much more powerful than the PS3, and they could not get a PS3 game locked at 60. Um, so that's that is what it is, and I want to thank uh, uh, VGL58, uh, I believe, uh, for for bringing up the Wind Waker because that's actually a good parallel to talk to compare what a remastered game should be uh, versus you know what I in my opinion in our opinion this that's what I think should be done you know take an old game and breathe new life into it and make it playable and fit to the new system. Um, just one last thing, it just really shows how similar the, the PS4 and the PS3 really are, um, that the game really, it doesn't change at all. Gameplay-wise, um, it's the same game. There's nothing more they really can do other than uh, make it look prettier. So that's just a, another thing about the, the next gen, quote-unquote next gen, that, that, Xbox and, and PlayStation kind of everything's based on graphics because there's really nothing else to to differentiate the game. So, uh, so yeah, that's 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 our thoughts on The Last of Us. Uh, like I said, though, it's a great game, and if you don't, if you never played it and you got a PS3, definitely try to find it for. I think you can get it for like 20 bucks places. So, uh, uh, just a great game, and it brings up good memories just talking about it. But uh, I think the remastered just a little too soon. Too much of a, a cash grab. Um, so, any last thoughts you want to say on the the Last of Us? Um, no, I think we pretty much summed it up. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yep. I'm good. All right. Um, so we got one question, and uh, you know we're about at the hour mark, and I think this will be good. Uh, now that Super Smash Brothers for 3DS is 100% complete, didn't know it had gone gold, but is it possible that we'll be seeing more exclusive stuff in the Wii U version of Smash? Um, as far as modes, I would think they're going to announce, if there's, I think there has to be some kind of single player mode, and they're going to announce it, um, but maybe after, excuse me, maybe after the 3D version uh, launches. I don't know about announcing it before the 3DS version. If it's something that's really cool, people might say, well, I'll wait. I'll just wait for the Wii U version now. Um, I think they're going to announce it after the 3DS version comes out. Uh, what do you think, Derek? Do you think, uh, you know, not, they're obviously moving uh, production over to the Wii U version now that the 3D, 3DS version is pretty much complete. Um, do you think they will announce or before or after the 3DS version? That they're, gonna, that they're going to announce yet for it. I mean, they didn't show us what the menu looked like on the Wii U, just the 3DS. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's something they didn't want us to see there. Yeah, that's true. I, that's a good point. I definitely think they're going to put all attention on the 3DS version since it's coming out first. Uh, we might not see much from the Wii U version until the 3DS version drops. Uh, who knows? You know, they might even do the next character reveal as the in the 3DS version visuals or something. You know, you never know. Um, so. Just I think a lot of people are excited for that game, and uh, once I get done with my stupid home improvement project, I can get back to playing Brawl and practicing because I have honestly haven't played it in over a week. Um, so uh, I got to get back to that because this kind of it's getting closer. You know, October is not that far away, and uh, I want to have you know some level of improvement by the time that game releases from where I'm at right now. 
Uh, so if anybody uh, didn't catch uh, the S Smash Brothers discussion we did Saturday night, it's on YouTube on my channel. And uh, and yeah, it was a, it was a good discussion. We talked a lot about the characters and stuff. And uh, you know, go check that out. Pretty much, that's going to be my go-to answer for a lot of Smash-related stuff now since we had that pretty long discussion about it. So, uh, I guess, uh, anything, any last words, anything you want to, uh, did we forget anything, Derek? No, we, we hit our itinerary perfectly. I'm really happy we landed on the hour mark here. Uh, I feel like we summed it up, man. Yeah, I mean, this, this would be nice to do an hour each time, but, uh, you know, sometimes can't hold to that, but, uh, you know, appreciate the guys. Sometimes. What's that? There's a lot of passion sometimes, you know. Yes, you're... sometimes the passion gets the better of us. It's When you're talking about something you truly enjoy, it's hard to, you know, time flies, as they say, when you're having fun. Uh, I do want to shout out to uh, Player Essence. Um, now that I'm a, a PE Network partner, um, you I'm sure most of you, if not every one of you, goes to Player Essence. I've said it before. I'll say it again. PlayerEssence.com. Uh, you, you go there, and it's a one-stop place for all news, mostly Nintendo, but it you know it does cover lots of other stuff. Uh, you click on the, the article, and it gives you the link to the source material. If you want to give a Nintendo enthusiast, if it happens to be their article, give them the, the click. Click on that, the link. And go read that, and then read the comments on both pages, Player Essence and the other one. It's it's just a nice uh, uh, avenue for finding information. And uh, Francis does a pretty good job keeping up. Uh, I don't I don't know how he does it. Um, you know, just doing a one week a weekly video series sometimes uh, seems like a little daunting for me with everything else that I do. But uh, yeah, you guys check out Player Essence. And uh, you know, Francis he contributed to this show with his uh, his comment and. Uh, Appreciate him for watching. I know that he's a busy man, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I want to thank Derek Steel Fox again for joining me and uh, having some good insight and stuff on uh, <clears throat> Destiny because I didn't get a chance to play it. And uh, and Blue Dog Fifty Four says congrats. Um, I'm guessing on the the partnership, so thank you for that. Look to see you as Andrew on uh, Mario Kart Eight. Uh, on Wednesday night. Hopefully we won't get booted into a lobby of four people and get kind of screwed out of points. So uh, uh, with that, um, I'm going to say adios. And Derek, again, great having you on every time. Uh, it's always fun. So uh, everyone else watching this, uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Have a good night.